In this segment, we'll cover initial configuration for the VES R2600 Pro and the VES J2600 JBOD. The first release of the R2600 Pro comes configured for rich media applications. In order for it to work optimally with the J2600 JBOD, we must configure the JBOD manually with a configuration script from our knowledge base. Future releases will have the configuration wizard built in. For the next steps, you'll need the VES R2600 Pro configuration script. Please download it from Knowledge Base Article 10426. Once you've downloaded the script, we'll need to connect to the R2600 Pro GUI. Make sure your hardware is connected and turned on, and then open a web browser. The first step is to log in. Enter 10.0.0.1 in your browser's URL bar. Note that this is a default IP address that can be changed. So in order to access the web GUI, make sure your workstation has the correct IP range. The default username is administrator, and the default password is password. As you can see, the R2600 Pro is already configured. So let's configure the J2600 JBOD. First, import the configuration script you downloaded earlier. Click the administrator panel and navigate to import export, import, and select configuration script from the type drop-down menu. Click choose file and locate your configuration script. Click next to verify the script Submit it, then confirm that you want to import and execute the script. After execution, dismiss the dialog and click the device panel to confirm that the J2600 JBOD has been configured. If you don't see the front of your device, click the front view link in the right hand menu. Now let's have a look at your ports. Click the IO network management link and then the ports panel. In order to obtain maximum performance, we're using a 10 gigabit ethernet network setup. As you can see, all four ports are online and linked at 10,000 megabits per second. Now let's create access portals for the NAS client. Click the NAS tab, then the IO network management link, then the create portal button. The 10 gigabit ethernet ports are ports five and six on each controller. Select the respective ports and give each of them an appropriate IP address. Note that for this demo, we've configured our 10 gigabit data network on two networks, separate from the network management port. Your portal configuration is now complete. If you need to set up additional users or groups using Active Directory, click the NAS tab and then the Account panel. Here you can set up local users, groups, and join domains. You can also use the File and Permission Management section to set up user and group permissions. Note that LDAP can be configured in the domain section by clicking the Join Domain button and entering the directory's IP information. Let's set up a local user. We can use this user later to mount our shared disks. Note that if you bind it with an LDAP, your LDAP users and groups will auto-populate. To see them, select Domain User from the Type drop-down menu. For this demo, we have not bound to an LDAP, so there are no users to see. Let's give access to the user we just created. Click on File and Permission Management. Since we just configured the JBOD, we now have shared disks 1 and 2. 
SD2 was created by the configuration script we imported earlier. Click the pencil icon in the SD1 row and select permission. Here, you can filter by local user, local group, domain user, or domain group. We'll select local user since we haven't bound to an LDAP. Click the gear icon to submit the query. Check the user, choose a permission, and click the submit button. Finally, let's have a look at NFS. Click the NAS tab, file system, shared disk, click anywhere in the disk pull one row, and then click the shared setting button. Add each client's IP address and permissions to give them access. Note that you can also adjust NFS squash mode settings here. The supported connection protocols are SIFS, SMB, NFS, AFP, FTP, and WebDAV. All protocols are enabled by default. To disable any protocols you don't want to use, click the NAS tab, File System, Protocol, and then select and disable individual protocols. For additional information on configuring LDAP, please reference the product manual available for download at the Promise website download center. Let's review our setup. The dashboard summary shows that the VES is online and functional. Click the device panel. You can see that the head unit and JBOD are configured. Click the NAS tab, then click the disk pool quick link. You can see that the disk pools and shared disks are set up and ready to mount. To ensure proper warranty and support availability, we strongly recommend registering your VEST series product upon initial setup. To register, go to support.promise.com. And that's it. You're now ready to mount and access the VEST R2600 Pro. Please note that Promise will offer advanced level 2 courses beyond the basic level 1. Also, be sure to use the Promise quick install guide and product manual as additional aids. For specific tips, more information can be found at the Promise Knowledge Base website at kb.promise.com. In our next video, we'll cover mounting and accessing the VES R2600 Pro.